Before we analyze this more carefully, let's talk about first fit. It's amazing how many real world applications use first fit, either in a global sense or it's buried inside in some kind of subroutine in which you have to make a legal choice and you don't have a lot of time to think about it, so you just make the first legal choice. So I'm going to give you a vertex. I'm not even going to tell you how many vertices after this I'm going to give you or the edges. And you just start coloring. And you might say, okay, I give up. I'll just use first fit because I have no idea what's coming. So I've given you a vertex, and you color it one. Then I give you another vertex. And I tell you, this vertex is not adjacent to the first one. It's not now, and it never will be. What color would you assign it if you were using first fit? One. Now I give you another vertex. And I say this one is adjacent to the first one, but not the second one. If you're using first fit, what color would you give it? You give it two. And now you can see what's coming. And now I say, oh, And now, first fit would color it three. Yeah. So first fit, in this case, is clearly not optimal. I mean, that's a little unfair, isn't it? it? It was asked to color a graph without knowing much about what the graph would actually be. But first fit, at least, will always produce a legal coloring. Maybe not an optimal one, but a legal one. Now, if you apply first fit carelessly, you can get some horrible results. Here's a graph. It's a complete bipartite graph minus a matching. I know that's a mess. And that's why uh, defining a graph is rarely done with a picture. What I in intend here is that I have n vertices on bottom, n vertices on top. There are no edges up here. There are no edges down here. That makes it a bipartite graph. And I have all edges between the bottom and the top, except everyone on the bottom has a mate on the top, and he's not adjacent to the mate. So this vertex is not adjacent to that one. This one is not adjacent to that one. This one is not adjacent to that one. Etc. What is the maximum clique size of this graph? Two. What's the chromatic number of this graph? Two. Is this graph perfect? Every bipartite graph is perfect. Every two-colorable graph is perfect. That's an obvious thing, but it follows as a one-line corollary from the perfect graph theorem. But suppose you were from UGA, and you had missed the first part of the lecture, and you were not intellectually advanced. 
and you said, I've learned about first fit. That's a really good way to do things. So you apply first fit and color this graph left to right. Color this vertex first. What would you color it? Color this vertex next. What would you color it? One. Because it's not adjacent to that one. Color this vertex next. What would you color it? Color this one next. What would you color it? Color this one next. What would you color it? What would you color this one? Color this one. You get the idea. So the UGA student applying first fit is going to get a real, it's going to get a legal coloring. But it's going to be a really bad one. The New Georgia Tech student walks in and says, you dimwit. Maybe, maybe even says something worse than that. And says, actually, the chromatic number is two. It's not five. All right, so first fit can, can be very, very bad in some situations.